Hello, I'm Joe Reed. Recent research indicates that law enforcement officers in rural areas and small towns often do not receive the training nor have the resources to adequately perform their duties. Small departments with fewer than 50 officers comprise 91% of law enforcement agencies in the United States. The National Center for State, Local, and International Law Enforcement Training at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Glencoe, Georgia, is partnering with the Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services, or COPS. This partnership was established to promote and support the implementation of community-oriented policing throughout the United States and to contribute to the professionalism and effectiveness of law enforcement in America. Now, to meet the needs of small town and rural agencies, while simultaneously improving the ability to contribute to national crime initiatives, the National Center created the Small Town and Rural Training Series, or STAR. Each of the STAR programs is directed toward either managers or facilitators who can return to their jurisdictions with all the materials necessary to replicate the training in their geographical areas. This approach creates a multiplier effect which will expand the effectiveness of policing throughout the United States. One of the STAR training programs is the Community Policing Train the Trainer. Community policing has been shown to reduce crime and the fear of crime while instilling a sense of community order. It also strengthens the bond between citizens and government. As public servants who interact with citizens on a daily basis, police officers and sheriff's deputies have a unique opportunity to demonstrate the importance of citizen involvement in the community. In turn, they realize that their authority and effectiveness are linked directly to the support they receive from citizens. The following scenarios are designed to allow participants in this training program to visualize the transition to the philosophy of community-oriented policing. Your class facilitator will provide additional information and instructions. So when are you going to get those vacation rosters to me? Well, since they have to be in by the 30th of the month, I should have them ready by the end of the week. You doing, Chief? Hey, Evelyn. Good to see you. Good. Carl, I've got some work to do. Hey, young man. How are you? Pretty good. How are you doing, Chief? Carl, what's happened that I need to know about since I've been gone? Yeah, everything ran pretty smooth, except Councilman Harvey is in an uproar. Uh, claims that too many of our guys are hanging out at the shopping center uh, you know, in front of a store during business hours. Says that... Uh, Gives the appearance it's not a safe place to be because of all the cops. Who figures? So how was the conference? Oh, the conference was fine. And I will handle Harvey. Everybody at the conference was talking about this um, community policing. I think it's something we need to be looking into. And I believe that you are my man. So I want you to take charge of it, all right? Okay, Chief. Good man. Okay, talk to you later. Hmm. Just what I need, something else to do. What are you doing in here? I just took another bicycle theft report. That's my third one in two weeks. Is anyone else seeing this problem? I don't know, check with those guys. 
Say, uh, how about taking a look at this stuff? Chief wants us to do community policing, make the chief happy. By the way, Tyler, uh, how about hitting the road? Uh, can't catch too many bad guys in here. What are you doing now? I reviewed the information you gave me on community policing, and it says that one of the keys to an effective community policing initiative is assessment. So I thought I would look through the files in order to get a truer picture of the crime problem. Hey, I didn't expect you to make a career out of this assignment. You know, just hold a couple of community meetings and tell them to give us a call when they see something going down. Anyway, if you want to know what the problem is, Get a copy of the annual report I did for the boss. It has all of the town's crime statistics for a year. You know, Tyler, putting together that report was a pain in the neck, but uh, I believe something good will come out of it after all. I showed the chief where our crime rate went up 10%. So the chief is using my report when he goes before the town council tonight to ask for more personnel. I figure with some more people, I can convince the chief that we can uh, start a tactical unit. Well, look, you better stay on that thing because if I know the chief, he'll want to see it pretty soon. Yes, ma'am. I know you can't sleep when the dogs are barking. Yes, ma'am. We know that the dogs knock over you and your neighbor's trash cans. Yes, ma'am. I know that the Johnson kid was bit just the other day. No, ma'am. We don't do that. You need to call Animal Control. Their number's in the telephone book. Okay? Thank you. That's the fifth call we've gotten this week already on those stray dogs. You'd think the Animal Control would do something. Well, maybe no one's called them. Oh, I better see if Dave needs some help. Got a problem, Dave? Yeah, just these juveniles. They think they can do anything they want. This guy thought he could skateboard anywhere he wanted to. Just about killed Mrs. Galland. Ran her down right in front of Councilman Harvey's store. I didn't mean to hurt the lady. It was an accident. I was just trying to have some fun. There's nothing to do in this stupid town anyway. Ask anyone. Well, all I know is you kids are making my job difficult. Complaints, complaints, that's all I get. Let's go. I wonder if anyone knows the real problems of this town. And so, based on the numbers that I've shown you, I'm sure that you can see that it is imperative that I have more personnel. Chief, I'm sympathetic to your request, but you know that the town has financial restraints. There's just no way that this council is going to be able to justify raising taxes, and that's what it would take to honor your request. You're just going to have to find another way to tackle this crime problem. You may want to start by doing something with those out of control youth that my constituents are always calling me about. Catching those people responsible for vandalizing my shop with graffiti may be a good start. Yeah, Chief, maybe you want to take some of those officers hanging in front of the shopping center and my store, scaring off my customers, put them back on the street where they belong. I hear what you're saying. Maybe I'd better start looking beyond these numbers. Want to see me, Chief? Oh, yeah, come on in. Come in and have a seat, Sergeant. I got hit pretty hard at the council meeting last night. It appears that the crime problems illustrated by your annual crime report statistics uh, may not have adequately reflected the true problems of our town. 
Well, I worked pretty hard on that report, Chief. Uh, those are the figures. We did, in fact, have a 10% increase in crime. Nobody's disputing that, Sergeant, but uh, what I gained from the meeting was that while they are concerned about the increase, they feel that there are several issues that rank of equal or higher concern. And uh, when I talk in with the council members after the meeting, those are valid concerns. And I think what we have to do is to identify the problems, find out what they really are, and we need community involvement. Which brings me right back to the materials that I dropped off with you about community policing. Uh, what I got from the uh, conference I went to was that community policing is involving the community in identifying and solving the problems. And that's what we need to do. And we need to do that now. You know, I've always thought we did a pretty good job, but maybe we can do an even better job. Now, just exactly where are you in the development of the uh, community policing? Well, I've only had a short time to review the materials, uh, but I have assigned a, an officer to assist me with the development. I'd say we can have a briefing for you in about a week. That'll be fine. How about next Thursday? Yes, sir. Thursday it is. Yeah. Is that all? That's it. All right, Chief. Thanks. Hey, Tyler, hold up a second. I need to talk to you. You know you're a hard person to catch up with. <laughs> Hi, Sarge. Well, I've been very busy since you assigned me to this community policing issue. I just picked up the last of the surveys. I should have a tally of the results tomorrow. But I can tell already from the earlier ones that we were way off base thinking we knew what was important to the town citizens. So uh, now what do we do with the information? Well, good I morning, had some officers. Oh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, say, look, I've, I've been seeing these survey forms floating around town, and... Uh, I've been meaning to ask the chief about it, but uh, is there some sort of problem? Oh, no, sir. Uh, Officer Tyler here is uh, using the survey to get a better understanding of the community and to do a better job. Ah, great. I was just telling Chief Ward the other day that he needed to come up with some new initiatives to solve the town's crime problem. You know, I, I think all of us are interested in making this a better town. And who knows, we may win one of those best place to live awards, huh? <laughs> Could be. Hey, look. I'm very excited about the police department's new approach to doing business. You folks keep up the good work, all right? Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Got to go. I'm late as usual. Take care. You know, if everyone has a vested interest in making the town better, and if the town's problems go beyond what we thought of as traditionally police problems, then maybe we should... In closing, Chief, you can see that the surveys have identified seven major problem areas which we need to address. Feedback from other sources seem to confirm these results. You know, some of these problems uh, we don't have any control over. You know, we don't pick up stray dogs. That's animal control's job. You're absolutely right, sir. We don't pick up dogs, but we do get a lot of calls about them. From dog bites to knocked over trash cans, we devote a lot of energy to something we don't do. Well, what about the juveniles hanging around the shopping center parking lot? Uh, I guess the only thing we can do is lock them up. Well, I'm sure there's something we can do other than locking them up. I mean, there has to be. We need to come up with a solution. So now we know the problems from the citizens' point of view. So how do we arrive at solutions? OK, we've identified three major areas of concern as a result of constituent input. Number one is a lack of proper recreational facilities at our parks since we had to cut new construction costs. <laughs> Number two is a lack of communication between the council and the public. And number three is a trash and litter problem brought on by budget cuts in public works. Look, whatever we decide to do, don't even think about raising taxes. I like my job. <laughs> and the citizens of this community are not ready to listen to a hearing about paying more. All I know is that something has to be done. It's getting harder and harder to find ball fields for little league games, let alone practice times. Well, then what we need is some help in coming up with solutions to our town's problems other than throwing money at them. What we need is community input and participation to solve our problems effectively.
Well, gentlemen, if no one minds, I'd like to begin discussing why I asked Chief Ward to hold this luncheon meeting. I know the Chief has been exploring this community policing philosophy, and uh, I've heard some very positive comments from communities that have become involved in the initiative. Chief, I wonder if you could get us started by giving us a brief overview of what you had in mind. Sure. I first became aware of uh, community policing, the law enforcement uh, conference I attended several years ago. On first review, I felt like it was something we needed to look into. I chose Sergeant Beach to initiate the um, implementation because he represents the traditional model of policing. And if he embraced community policing, those in my department would see its benefits. Then uh, Sergeant Beach chose uh, Officer Tyler to help him with the work. Well, Chief, this concept is very new to me. Uh, in a nutshell, what are we talking about in this program? Tom, it's not a program, it's a philosophy of how the police department, in concert with the community, goes about doing its job. Um, I'll get some literature sent over to you about it. Well, better yet, maybe we could have you or Sergeant Beach uh, give a presentation to the council and a few key members of the town. I, I, I think that, uh, that some other people are going to have the same kind of questions that, that Tom does. Uh, maybe you could have something ready by next month? Sure. Consider it done. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this, uh, isn't this a complete departure from the way that your officers have traditionally gone about doing their jobs? Are they ready for this kind of change? Well, I know the police department needs to look into how we go about doing our job and to determine what changes will be initiated uh, if we do take on community policing and make it a reality. Captain Shell, who's been very quiet here today, um, will make that assessment. He, his job will actually be to decide how to do it and how to do it right. I've lived in this community all my life. I have a vested interest in this town's quality of life. As soon as I can get back to the office, I'm going to work on putting something together. Well, gentlemen, now that we've embraced community policing with an eye toward making our community a better place to live, I think we've made a major step toward establishing better communications between government and the community. So, Tyler, uh, as you can see by the numbers, uh, your overall performance has decreased in this last year. I don't know what your problem is, but you need to rededicate your efforts and get back on the right track. The rest of the squad has increased their totals, and I expect the same thing from you. Some of the other officers uh, have complained that your community policing activities are taking away your ability to answer calls. It appears that you're spending too much time on some calls and not getting back on patrol as quickly as possible. Well, Tyler, the department has achieved some positive results out of your community policing thing. But you've got to remember something. Patrol is the backbone of this department. And Tyler, you're starting to get a reputation as an officer others can't count on. Again, this overindulgence with the community policing thing, making your fellow officers uh, feel that you're not concerned with their safety. They need you there in case they need backup. Tyler, if you're looking to move up in this department, you've got to remember what's important. You are judged on your performance. Now, those that want to get ahead, they're the ones that apply themselves to locking up the bad guys and achieving a high traffic enforcement total. It worked for me, and it can work for you. But you've got to listen to me and start hustling. Sergeant, how exactly does community policing fit into this department?
As a department, we are positively committed to the concept of community policing. A recent survey, as you all are aware, was conducted regarding citizens' perception of the town's problems. We are currently working with the community to come up with viable solutions to those problems. I've heard feedback from some of the townspeople, including some of your officers, that they're not too keen on this community policing idea, that they're worried that it's too touchy-feely and soft on crime. Have all of your officers been trained on community policing? Have there been any educational meetings scheduled for the town citizens? Human resources, as you've stated to this body, is very critical. So, Chief, I prepared a list of concerns. How are you planning to introduce this new initiative, knowing that we're still operating under financial restraints and there's no additional funds available? What about new equipment? And what other partners in the community are you planning to work with? Have you contacted them? And what was their response? Is everyone on board with the decision to go with this? Have we as a council had a real chance to scrutinize this initiative? I don't want to endorse any initiative, philosophy, or program that's soft on crime. I'd like to see the plans for this initiative, as well as any supporting data. I like what I see, but I'm a little concerned about what I'm hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's give the chief a chance. I'm sure that he's developed a comprehensive plan for this community policing philosophy. 